Welcome to the video, everybody. My name is Steph. So, FANG employees or ex-FANG employees who are fired are now getting low ball offers. That is what I'm hearing in the nerd zeitgeist. So if I can find the comments under my recent video where these people from FANG companies are saying that, yes, uh, I was in a FANG, I got laid off, I got some low ball offers, and I know several other people from the FANGs who are getting now low ball offers. This is as a result of all the hype in the media about the recession. Let me just answer a few things that are probably percolating in your brain. Is this the doom of software development? Or shall I say, is this the doom of software developers? It's not. During a boom cycle, like we saw at Meta and other companies, they hire like crazy. They overhire. They overhire based on the fact we're in a boom. And then when signs of recession come in, they all start going, eh, and they lay off a bunch of people that they don't really need, they never really needed in the first place, I would argue. So yes, FANG developers who were recently laid off are getting new job offers, although they are low ball job offers. That's just a company or companies out there saying, hey, we'll see if we can pick up some talent for less pay, less pay. It's still pretty high pay because FANG developers get paid a lot, but still less pay. Uh, in fact, a friend of mine, about a month or so ago, he got hired by one of the FANGs. He got hired by one of the FANGs. So yes, there are lots of layoffs, but it's, it's less about, ah, we need money, we're in trouble. It's more, it's more about, all right, we hired a bunch of people we don't really need, let's, let's get rid of them, and let's just uh, hire people that we do need like my friend who was just hired. He used to work for me. Anyhow, uh, if you look at Twitter, when Twitter got in there, well, Elon Musk got in there, and let's take the politics out of it, let's look at it from a point of view of business. Elon Musk walks in there, and being an entrepreneur, not a corporate guy, it's a very big difference. Corporate people are uh, not nearly as efficient as entrepreneurs, typically, unless the corporate people come from the entrepreneur lifestyle, but that's a whole different issue. Anyway, so Elon comes in there and says, hey, why do we have eight, 9,000 people to run a text messaging app? This, when I heard this, it blew my mind. I couldn't believe it either. I mean, I've never had anything close to the size of Twitter, but I've had like dating sites. I had one dating site and other message or text heavy uh, services, and I just, I couldn't put my head wrapped, I couldn't wrap my head around the idea that somehow Twitter would have 9,000 employees. It would make any sense to me. Anyway, fast forward six, eight months later, Twitter has put out much more features than they, than they have in the last 10 years. It's running super fast, it's running fine. And when all the expert academics out there were saying, oh, you can't fire everybody, it's going to be the death of the company, the company's running better than it ever has before, and about 80% of the staff has walked away. That tells you something about how wasteful big organizations are typically. The famous hedge fund um, activist investor, very aggressive investor, you should look him up, called Carl Icahn, self-made multi-billionaire, famously gambled his way through university, meaning he paid off all his university bills by gambling, so he knows gambling. Anyhow, he uh, is hated by Wall Street because he would, he would go into a particular company that he found that was weak uh, in terms of, weak in terms of he was, he was able to take over the company via stock purchases. Long story short, he said like 80, 90% of the Wall Street companies are so poorly managed. These are Wall Street companies that, uh, publicly traded companies, that you could go in there within six months, clean it up and reduce the cost by 30, 40%. And Elon Musk did re re reduce the headcount by 80%, right? And it's running even better than before. That, by the way, gives you insight into, again, how inefficient big organizations are. I'm looking at you, big government. So back to the uh, subject at hand, you got all these FANG employees getting offers, Lobo offers, but offers. That tells you that there are jobs out there. It also tells you that uh, in this type of environment, where there's a little bit of fear out there because of the uh, recession, which we're probably in already, and I'll define recession very quickly soon. Um, there's still jobs, there's still a lot of jobs. So there are things that you can do to mitigate for, to handle yourself during a recession, so you'd be fine. Now, first of all, recession is simply a slowdown in the economy. That's it, that's all it is, it's a slowdown. What happens in a recession, it cancels out 
the weak, the weak jobs, the weak employees, the people who are not so needed. It filters out companies that are barely making it. And uh, it's basically like a brush fire in the woods. Now, if you know anything about the woods, I used to, I grew up living up north in northern Quebec. Well, for a short period of time anyway, a couple of years, few years. When the, uh, the woods burn, when you have a forest fire, it, uh, it cleans out all the dead wood, all the old, the buildup in the woods. And then what happens, you get all kinds of new growth. It's quite rejuvenating, in fact. So after you get this burnout, you get the rejuvenation. That's what a recession is to a certain extent vis-a-vis -vis the economy. It burns out the, the wastefulness in the economy and allows for new business opportunities to, sp to spring out. So the good news is that after this re recession is over, which takes about a year or so, depending, it's gonna be amazing in terms of the opportunities. It also is an opportunity for you to prep yourself for a recession. Uh, if you're not feeling it already, you will, might, you might never feel it at all, by the way. But if you do end up feeling it, you should be prepared for that. And I talk about that in a previous video, build up your FU stash. Uh, improve your marketable skills, look at the job market, look where the trends are in technology in the case, I'm assuming you're, in a, you're watching this because we do tech here, um, and, and, and align your skill sets with the new trends. Don't look backwards, look forward, not in terms of what the nerds are telling you, in terms of what the job market is telling you. So yeah, it's time to pivot a little bit. You know, I've been at this since the 90s, and so I've seen this type of thing happen before. It will pass, and then huge new opportunities will come about. Huge new opportunities will come about. So I wouldn't be too concerned about it. Again, follow my, look at my previous videos where I talk about all this type of stuff, things you should do, how you should build your technical skills, your interpersonal skills, start looking to build relationships, uh, you know, network with people. That's how you secure yourself in this whole uh, industry. The bottom line is that we are social animals, us humans. And as a such, you have to be social. The people who keep the jobs, who get the jobs, they have to have the technical skill, but they also have the good interpersonal skill and the relationship. So if you're weak on that, like so many of us nerds are or were, like me, uh, I was a bit of a ball buster. Um, yeah, it doesn't get you very far. So think about it, if you're worried about losing your job, as I said in other videos, uh, think about who Who's going to keep their job? Who's going to lose their job during a time when they're going to have to cut, uh, start cutting heads? It's very simple. If you're the person that's easy to get along with, that helps out, that gets things done, you're the last person they're going, to, they're going to want to get rid of. If, on the other hand, you're the person who is hard to get along with, doesn't cooperate, uh, can't count on you in a clutch situation, you're going to be the first to go. So keep that in mind. You get what you give in this world, you get what you give, be helpful, and you're gonna get a lot out of life because that's how our, our brains, as social monkeys that we are, that's how our brains operate. We have a natural tendency to wanna to help those around us who help us. So be helpful, be helpful, be nice. All right, I hope this uh, video is useful. My name is Uncle Steph and I'm a mentor. I mentor people in the ways of coding, freelancing, entrepreneurship, and so much more. Everything that I teach, by the way, everything that I coach in is born out of personal experience. Nothing theoretical from me. I think that theoretical knowledge is fine. It's the beginning of knowledge, but what, what a lot of people at university don't understand, including all the professors, is that academic knowledge is just the beginning of a deep understanding of a subject just the beginning. So if you want to really grasp code, you don't want to get caught down the tutorial hell rabbit hole, always learning things from courses and books and so on. You want to get your minimum skill set, and then you want to get the jobs. You want to get into the job market as quickly as possible. You want to start building things as quickly as possible. Your knowledge, theoretical and practical, will grow almost exponentially when you actually build real things. So don't do what I did in the past in other areas where I got caught up in the academic uh, trap, if you will, thinking that academic knowledge will somehow give me a, a head start or an advantage in the practical world. It doesn't. It's like fighting. I was a bouncer for a couple of years. I did uh, martial arts for over 25 years. At one point, I wanted to become a professional fighter. 
never materialized for stories I won't get into, but I discovered early on that a good scrap, good full contact sparring match was worth more than months and months and months and months of gym training or academic training, doing drills and so forth. One completed web app, one completed website, even simple one, is worth much more than dozens of courses. All right, I hope this helps. My name is Steph. So people call me Uncle Steph. I'm a mentor. I teach people ways of code, as I said just a few minutes ago. And uh, so many other things. If you're interested in what I do, you can check out my site, UncleSteph.com. That's my mentoring program. I also have self-paced learning courses where you can learn on your own. Very unique programs, very different from anything you're going to see on the other platforms, very different from Udemy, very different from anything on YouTube. Why? Because you'd be using my platform, studioweb.com. Check it out. It's used by schools and many districts today to teach coding in the classroom. So over 10 years now, it's like going on 11, 12 years, I've been working with many districts to to evolve, to refine, to develop uh, a really super effective way to teach people quickly and easily, well, anything really, but it concentrates on cold, of course. Hey, I did a really good yoga class today. The yoga instructor, uh, instructor, this woman uh, was very good, good lines. She had good lines, meaning she can do her techniques well. I'm stretching out my crinkly 170-year-old body. It's uh, good to be in shape, by the way. It's good to be in shape. Uh, yoga is a great supplemental exercise. I think your primary exercise should be weightlifting. Not that I do too much of that. I'm, I'm shifting it now. And yoga is a great way to uh, stretch out your crinkly body. All right. Talk soon.